Now let's talk about the istikhara. This is for some older people. I always get asked the question, even today I got it. This is probably the most that I get questions about relationships and family. Married couples, divorced couples, people who are having problems, people who are ready to get married. Today we're going to talk about those who want to get married. And once you want to get married, obviously it is a little bit scary when you think about lifelong relationship. Because the person you choose, they're with you. They're stuck with you. And you're stuck with them. You're going to have to make it work. That choice is it. And it will affect every part of your life. That is true. However, there is, alhamdulillah, a beauty to it. If you follow the right pathways, inshallah. And the best, path, best pathway is to follow the pathway of Allah, God, who made you. We have, alhamdulillah, the Qur'an ready for us. And we have the statements of our prophets and our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so intricately and detailed right to even what he used to do with his wife inside the house. She used to describe how he was as a husband. So we have so much detail. We have even how many white hairs the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had in his beard. Literally, we counted them. And we know... Everything about so we have so much information and guidance as a basis to which way to go about it. So let's talk about the istikhara. A lot of people say, I made an istikhara. Should I, do I have to have a feeling? Am I meant to see a dream? Is there a sign? Just today someone asked me. I, she said, I, I, I got interested in a brother, a family member. And after a long time and I made istikhara, I asked him, or I sent someone to ask him, and he said, no, I'm not interested. She said, is that a sign? I said, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely, he doesn't want you. <laughs> there's no, there's no you know, magical thing about it. So my brothers and sisters, someone else, they approached me and said, and this is a cultural tradition. I'm going to talk about some really wrong things that people do. Sometimes culture, sometimes it's our elders who get it wrong and, and stuff it up for the young people. They make it very hard for them. One of the things about istikhara that is so false and wrong is when the, they say you have to get um, your father or your grandfather or a sheikh or an imam to do the istikhara for you because they're more holy, they're more religious. So they'll do the istikhara for you and then they'll tell you what dream they had. And the dream will tell them if you should go ahead or not. This is the most misleading thing I've ever heard in my life. It contradicts all the teachings of Islam. There is nothing... In the Qur'an or Sunnah of the entire hadith, you search it and I challenge anyone to find it. A text where the Qur'an or the Prophet ﷺ told us that's how the istikhara is done. Istikhara is a prayer. You pray two rak'ahs, then you ask Allah, dua and salat. You don't go in and say to somebody, hey, you know, I just came into the mosque. Can you please do the tahiyyat al-masjid for me? I'll just sit on the corner over there. You don't say that to people. Salat and dua is yours. The proper way to do it is that you have to do it because you're the one who's meaning it. It's coming out from your heart. You're the one who wants Allah to help you, right? No one else. So it's not from the sunnah. It's not from Islam that someone else does the istikhara for you. I don't know where people got this from. I don't know what justifications they had. I'm not saying it's haram. I'm just saying it's not the right way and you're going to be misled that way. I've had these situations. A lot of people come. So I'm not going to say one person, many they come to me and say, well, my grandfather said he is going to do the istikhara for me. A brother asked for me, for example, or a sister asked for me. And you got the grandfather, for example, or the father or an uncle who has gone on a very different tangent of Islam. You know, a very spiritual one that's, you know, the type of spirituality where they're detached from what reality of life really is. You know, some people take Islam as something so spiritual that it's completely detached from real life. It's almost a fantasy. That's not how Islam is. Islam is practical. So the grandfather went, or the father, I don't know who, they made istikhara, they saw a dream, it was a bad dream. Maybe the shaitan came to them, I don't know. They said, you're not allowed to marry this guy. But he's a good guy. He's a religious guy. He's a good, good character. He has a job. He has an income. He's known to be trustworthy. He's known to be honest. Everybody talks well about him. He's got a good reputation at school. He's got a good family. No, the dream. They base it on the dream. Brothers and sisters, there are so many stories like this. Sometimes they say, I made an istikhara and I really want this person. So, so why did you do the istikhara? The istikhara is asking Allah for advice and guiding you. Someone said, can I say the first part of the istikhara, not the second part? Because this is how the istikhara goes. 
Rasul, the Prophet وسلم, said, if any of you has decided to take a step towards a particular endeavor, anything in life, you have made the decision and you want to go ahead. Before you go ahead, pray two rak'ahs and say the istikhara. The istikhara sounds like this, O oh Allah, I seek your counsel for you know I do not know. You, um, you have the, the qadr, you are the one who wills, I cannot will. You are the all-knower of everything. O oh Allah, if this is good for me in my religion, my well-being and, and worldly affairs, and my hereafter, then grant it to me and grant me to it and bless it for us. And if it is bad for me, for my religion, my worldly affairs and well-being and for my hereafter, then keep it away from me and me away from it and guide me to where is better and make me accept it. Now someone said to me, can I say the first part? If it is good for me, bring it and me to it, but not the second part. I said, well, that's not istikhara. You're asking Allah to make it work for you. There's nowhere where it says that the istikhara, the condition of istikhara is that you have to have an open heart, uh, that you feel good all the way or that you have to have a dream. There's nothing like that. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa said, once you have made your decision. Now listen carefully. It says, The hadith is in Bukhari. If one of you has decided, what does that mean? One of you has decided, meaning you have gone, researched, investigated, asked about them, met them, or uh, sorry, even before meeting them. Let's say you want to make a stikhara to go and meet them for marriage. You go and ask about them. You find out if they even want to get married. You research about them. You ask families. You ask friends. Look at their social media page. After you've done all that research, then you make the istikhara before going over. Then after you meet them and talk to them and you investigate a second, the second step, after all that, you use, you use your logic, you use your rationale, you study, you investigate, you think about what you want, you ask the questions, you study the topics. Then before the next major step, making the decision to get married, make an istikhara. Why? Because there's two parts to making a decision. Number one is the normal, practical, logical rationale of how things work. Get to know the person for crying out loud. Do all the proper stuff. Take advice from experts, from your parents. Do all that stuff. Know what you want. Ask the right questions. We talked about that last week. That's for the now. You want to get married now? Do your investigation for the now. So what is the istikhara for? The istikhara is for the later. The istikhara is for the future. We know what's happening now, but we're not, we don't know what, where it will go in the future. So we make the istikhara for the unknown future, not for the now. As for the now, investigate. Make your istikhara. And the ulama said there are some signs to the istikhara, but don't use them specifically. Don't rely on one or two. Don't say, I made an istikhara and that night you saw a dream. You saw snakes and dogs. Is he good for me? I say, no, that's the shaitan. The shaitan is telling you don't take him because it's probably good. So, but the istikhara, so this, there's nothing that says you have to see a dream after the istikhara. Dreams in general come in three forms, in general. Not attached to istikhara, just in general. Number one, they are the conversations you have with your conscience. The things you think about in the day, when you go to sleep, your brain and you talk to each other. That's the majority of dreams, the majority of us. The second type of dream are nightmares that come from the shaitan. They're the, the dogs and the cats and the scary monsters and the snakes and I don't know what, and the night terrors and the um, per sleep paralysis, all these come from the shaitan. They don't harm you. They just scare you a little bit. You wake up, you're a little bit terrified, recite Ayat al-Kursi, turn to the other side, say Bismillah, and you'll be okay, inshallah. The third type of dreams are the ones from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're difficult to see properly. Sometimes they're mixed with other things. So you've got to ask the, elder, the, the a shaykh or an imam or a scholar or somebody you know who's knowledgeable a little bit who can kind of give you some advice. You don't just go and determine it yourself. That's not attached to the istikhara. It could be, but it's not. Nor is it that you're going to say, oh, I feel so good. Habibi, when the sun comes out, I feel good. Some people, they, they're not thinking about, I've seen this before. They're not thinking about someone, but it was a nice day. They go, and they fall in love. It's not because the girl or the boy is good. It's because the sun was out. It's because the weather was nice. You had euphoria. 
Hormones came out, the happy for the serotonin and dopamine, right? It, you you got to distinguish between psychological or hormonal um, reactions, a bit of adrenaline, and use your brain. Just sit down, write it down. What questions? What's important in my marriage? What's important in my life? Let's look at my family. What kind of a family would suit that I'd be part of? Imagine myself in 10 years' time and I have children. How would my life be? Then go and talk. Do I work? What would I like her to be? How would I like him to be? What would matter to me? What would make me stop getting into this marriage? That's how you think, logically and rationally. Then the istikhara comes later for the future, so that Allah can be there for you and open the pathway for you. Sometimes you may see ease, doors opening, opening, opening. That's a good sign. Sometimes you won't feel anything at all. Sometimes you won't feel anything at all. So I tell you, keep going. Sometimes you may feel a little bit up and down. Maybe, maybe not. It doesn't matter. Keep going. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't happen, alhamdulillah, you'll know in the end. You will feel it in the end. Just by the way cause and effect is. That, man, this is getting too hard. Father's getting really stubborn. The girl is having thoughts up and down. One minute we're together. Next minute we're not. Uh, I've seen so many red flags. So try to understand what your feelings are and what your brain is telling you. It's very, very important. So brothers and sisters, with the advice and support of family and elderly, inshallah, and by praying to Allah and making dua, you cannot go wrong. Brothers and sisters, and your investigation and research. Brothers and sisters, therefore now we understand what the istikhara is. Okay? It's for the future. For now, make your research, investigate, do all the things you have to do. And make a decision. There's nothing perfect. You're never going to have a perfect wife or husband, ever. And you're still going to have your ups and downs. Don't blame it on the istikhara, no. But Allah will be there for you in thick and thin. You just do what's right by what He told you, and the rest of it, rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and keep going. All right, brothers and sisters? That's the best thing, inshallah.